Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Today is the day that we are going to plant the greenhouse for the summer. We have a lot of plants to go in the greenhouse today. Some of them we started from seed all the way back in February. Some of them will be starting from seed today right in their pots. This half of the greenhouse is going to be almost entirely tomatoes. Uh, this year I'm doing a lot of cherry tomatoes because really that's what I eat the most of. We don't need to do as many of the other types of tomatoes this year because Sarah did a lot of canning last year and doesn't need to do quite as much this year. But we are growing a new type of paste tomato this year for the first time and we're going to be trying a new slicer. So along with a couple new varieties of cherry tomatoes, we actually have several new varieties that we're trying this year and that is really exciting. In total, we're going to be putting 28 tomato plants in this side of the greenhouse. Uh, other than that, there's going to be some green beans toward the back and just a couple basil plants up here at the front. But for the most part, this entire side is going to be tomatoes. I even bought a new shirt for the occasion today. <laughs> they say you are what you eat, so when I saw this shirt, I figured, hey, I need this for the summer. Now, over the past two years, we have grown all of our tomatoes on a single stem with a string all the way up to basically the top of the greenhouse. So we're going to be doing that again this year, but we don't need to start on that today because... They're just going to be like this far out of the ground. Right. Now, last year we planted the greenhouse around the beginning of April, but you guys, this year, the beginning of April was still below freezing at night, so we couldn't do that. Now it's April 15th, and you guys, the high yesterday was 92. The high today was 88. So we've gone from winter to like middle of summer temperatures within a matter of two weeks. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but we just need to roll with it and we need to get this greenhouse planted. The plants that we have started are kind of struggling in these little pots that we have them in just because of all of a sudden this super hot weather. So there's no more delaying today. They absolutely need to get in the ground. On this side of the greenhouse, we're going to be planting kind of a combination of things. Uh, lots of peppers, but not quite as many as last year. I still have quite a few in the freezer from last year. We're also going to be doing zucchini squash, a yellow squash, another kind of beans, and some cucumbers. So lots to go in on this side of the greenhouse. So. It is already getting a little later in the day. It's about 4.30 in the afternoon. We waited till it was starting to cool off just a little bit. We're going to try to get this entire greenhouse planted yet today. Let's get started. Well, we've laid out all of the plants in each of the pots in this very first row. We're going to start off this row like we did last year because it worked out really well. We're planting first two buckets of basil. Kevin and I love pesto. So every year we grow basil and our very favorite variety for pesto is the Genovese variety. It gets very big, very tall. You get lots of cuttings throughout the summer and the leaves are nice and big. So I have uh, decided to plant two plants per bucket and that will be a great amount of basil for pesto for us. Uh, we started all of these from seed and they're looking pretty good. I've actually cut them back once already to get them to start branching out. So I'm just gonna plant both of these kind of equally spaced in the bucket so that they each get some really nice water from the sprinkler head here. Just tip that upside down and tap it a little bit. Comes right out of the pot. The uh, roots are nice and bright white. That means it's very healthy. Set it down in that hole and then just backfill it with the soil. Now the soil in these buckets is about 50% compost and about 50% potting soil, which is a really great mixture for growing in containers. Now, just as a reminder, all of these buckets are, uh, they're crystal licks tubs. They're, they're um, mineral protein lick tubs that cattle farmers use. When you buy these tubs, they're actually filled with the protein 
uh, the protein substance than cattle lick them out. And then these tubs are just kind of like a byproduct. We use these for our own cattle, but over the years, we've also gathered and collected them from other cattle farmers. But now, a lot of times, at least in our area, you can find these for sale on Facebook Marketplace or on Craigslist for anywhere, well, probably average about $5 each, which is a great deal. Okay, so this bucket of basil is planted. I'm just gonna move over here and just quickly and easily plant this bucket. Now on to cherry tomatoes. We're going to be growing eight cherry tomato plants out here this year, six of which are new varieties for me. We're going to plant four different varieties, two plants of each. The first that we're gonna be planting are called Tessa's Landrace Current Tomatoes. Uh, they are a small red cherry tomato that grow, um, you know, about, about like this, I think. They're about bite size is what it says. And they're supposed to grow in kind of big chains almost of tomatoes. Uh, they're supposed to be very prolific, which is one of the reasons that I picked them. And they're also supposed to do well in warmer climates like ours. The next up after that is called Golden Nugget. A uh, golden nugget, as it sounds like, is a golden colored tomato, a yellow or orange tomato. I'm really growing these mostly for our daughter Grace because she loves orange tomatoes, orange cherry tomatoes. Uh, I'll be honest with you guys, if it were just up to me, I wouldn't grow these because we haven't had good luck with orange or yellow tomatoes in our area. They always seem to crack. And originally I was going to do these outside, but I figured maybe here in the greenhouse under the shade cloth, we might be able to get them to do a little better than we would outside. So we're gonna give them a try and I'm sure that they'll be great. After that, we're doing um, a variety called Red Centiflor. Uh, this one was highly recommended by Luke over at MI Gardener. They're supposed to be, according to him, the most prolific tomato that he's ever grown. Uh, he says you will definitely have a lot to give away if you grow this variety. Uh, they are another kind of small cherry tomato, bite-sized cherry tomato. They grow in like really big clusters with about 40 tomatoes on each cluster. And according to him, they all ripen, like the entire cluster will ripen at once. So you can just cut the entire cluster, which is great because then I can just carry it around with me and eat as I work. And then the last variety that we're doing is uh, my all-time favorite cherry tomato, which you know we have to do, which is the large red cherry. Uh, these are always super prolific. Uh, they always produce way more than even I can eat, which says a lot. And I know that they're going to do great out here again this year. All right, so we're going to start with the Tessa's Landrace Current Tomatoes. Uh, these are a much thinner stem than some of the other tomatoes. Now, because we had to hold off a couple weeks to plant because of cold temperatures in our area. These plants have gotten a little bit bigger than we would have liked in our pots here. You can see the roots kind of coming out the bottom and the plants are falling over a little bit. But you guys, these are tomatoes. They're very, very forgiving. So what we will do is we will just cut off these lower branches. In this case, I'm gonna probably cut them off all the way up to about here. And then we will just plant this plant all the way down in the soil. This entire stem can go down into the pot and all of this will turn into roots underground and then this tomato will start to grow straight up. So it doesn't really matter in the long run that it fell over like this in the pot. We're just gonna snip all of these off. We're gonna have to dig a pretty deep hole for these. Now we are going to be doing a few varieties of tomatoes out in the actual raised bed garden as well this year uh, but those we still have another few weeks before we can put tomatoes outside in the outside garden Now that that plant is in, you can see that uh, it's still kind of falling over. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of these bamboo stakes. I'm gonna just put that in. And then 
I'm just going to use a twist tie and we're just going to stake this up. It'll only take a few days for this plant to just straighten up on its own. And actually, pretty darn soon we'll come out here and start stringing these up to the top of the greenhouse anyway. But in the meantime, this will hold it up so that it starts to grow straight up. This is going to be perfect. Uh, got a big pack of these steaks. We might have to do this with a lot of our tomatoes this year because they're all kind of falling over like that. But again, it's not a big deal. It's just one extra step while we're planting them. This year I'll be planting two varieties of paste tomatoes. And paste tomatoes I use to make pasta sauce, spaghetti sauce, uh, things like that. Just love it. I'll be doing uh, six plants of the Amish paste, which has become my absolute favorite over the last couple of years. And then a new variety called Jersey Devil. Jersey Devil is a long paste tomato, about six inches long, very prolific with a fantastic flavor. Oh, that's at least what I've read. I have high hopes for these plants this year. So total of 12 paste tomatoes are going in, the Amish paste and the Jersey Devil. All right, on to the final type of tomato, and that is our slicing tomatoes. These are your kind of classic tomatoes, great for sandwiches, great for canning, things like diced tomatoes, stewed tomatoes, all of those types of things. Uh, but mostly BLTs, that's what they're best for. Even though these days we don't eat bread, I can still have the bacon, lettuce, and tomato, just not on the bread. That's fine with me. So we're planting two varieties of slicing tomatoes this year. One, of course, you guys know we plant every single year called Jetstar. The other is a new one that we're trying, which is an heirloom that we're hoping might be a good alternative to the Jetstar since the Jetstar is a hybrid. Uh, it is called Rose de Burn, and it is uh, highly recommended also by Luke from MI Gardener. So we're hoping that if this is a great producer, eventually we may grow less of the Jetstar because we'll be able to save seeds from these. Well, all of the tomatoes are in. You guys, this is an exciting day. Now we do have them all staked because again, they were kind of falling over. We're gonna leave them staked like this for probably like a week. After about a week, they'll straighten up nice. At that point, we'll use our single string method to uh, you know string them up to the top of the greenhouse. I'm sure we'll probably bring you guys along when we do that to show you how to do that. At the end of this row, we're going to finish it out with some green beans. This is a variety that a lot of you have recommended to us over the last eight years, and we're finally going to try them. Uh, we normally only do one type of bush green bean, and that is contender, but this year we're also going to be trying the jade bush. I know a lot of you grow these. You say that they're great, so we are going to plant about 30 plants of these. We're going to plant six buckets. But we're also going to be planting our contenders so that we can compare them side by side. Uh, maybe these will win out, and from now on, this is the only one we'll grow. So let's go down to the end of the row, and we'll plant these down there. Now, because of the way our emitters are in the middle of our bucket, we're going to actually plant our bean plants just around the edges. Again, we're gonna plant five plants per bucket. We're gonna do these six buckets right here. I counted the seeds already because I got a little nervous. It said only 25 in the package, but there's actually 31. So we have one extra, so that's good. Nothing big about planting bean seeds. Uh, just gonna put it in, push it down about a half inch. Cover it up with some soil. And that's all there is to it. We got five in this bucket. We're gonna do five in each of these other buckets. And then I think we're gonna move on to peppers. Okay, 
you guys on to the peppers which is really my favorite part because I love to grow peppers the first buckets here the first four that we're gonna be growing are bell peppers I don't need a whole lot of bell peppers to, because to be honest I have a bunch of them still in the freezer uh, but you have to have fresh bell peppers and this year I found seed for what is my favorite bell pepper called emerald giant I found them through MI Gardener. So three out of the four buckets of bell peppers that we are gonna be growing will be Emerald Giant. And the fourth one will be California Wonder because that's just kind of a tried and true variety that always produces. Uh, next up in the pepper department will be a new red pepper. You guys know that I love red roasting peppers and this year I'm gonna try a new variety. It's technically a grilling pepper, like a red grilling pepper, but grilling, red roasting to me kind of seems like the same thing. So I'm gonna be trying this new variety. It is called Red Corno de Toro, which is really hard to say, but I'm hoping it does fantastic and produces a ton of peppers so that we can all try them kind of together. So I'm doing two buckets. Now each one of the buckets, we're gonna be planting two pepper plants, which worked really well for us last year. So I'm gonna continue doing that this year. Next up is something that Kevin has been wanting to try for a couple of years. It's a habanero pepper that is not spicy, kind of like the jalapeno peppers that we've done in the past that aren't spicy. Those are called natapenos, but this year we're trying the not spicy habaneros, which are called habanadas. <laughs> so we're gonna be trying two different buckets of the habanadas with uh, two peppers each, two pepper plants each, so four of those. Next up, we're getting into the spicy department. This year, we're gonna be growing four plants, two buckets of Hungarian hot wax plants. They're kind of like spicy yellow banana peppers. So we're excited about that. Next up are jalapenos. We grow jalapenos every year for salsa, but we also like to let them like ripen fully to the red stage and use them to make sriracha, which is actually my favorite hot sauce. I'd like to make more this year because we're almost out in the pantry. So we will be planting three buckets of jalapenos uh, with a total of six plants. Moving on will be Tabasco peppers. It's been several years since I have planted Tabasco peppers because Tabasco pepper plants produce a ton of peppers. They might be little, they're like small but mighty. <laughs> they're very prolific and their little peppers pack a, pack a punch and we are completely out of Tabasco sauce in the pantry and Kevin eats a lot of Tabasco sauce. So I have six plants or three buckets of Tabasco peppers they're really fun to grow. They look like little Christmas trees with their red little peppers on them look like Christmas lights. I hope that they produce a bunch so that I can show you just how prolific and how beautiful and how wonderful their flavor is. And then hopefully later this summer, we can make some Tabasco sauce together. Okay, like I said, we are gonna be planting two pepper plants per bucket because it did really well last year. And really this is just as easy as dig a hole, put the plant in it and cover it back up. Now, for those of you who have been following us for many, many years, you will notice that when we started planting the tomato plants, something was missing. We did not use rabbit manure in the bottom of our holes this year. We have found that this compost that we have been using is so dense in nutrients that it is actually not necessary. So this year we will not be planting with using rabbit manure in the bo bottom of our holes because the compost is just that good. So planting these uh, pepper plants, we're going to be doing two in one pot like I had said, and we're just going to be equally spacing them on two different sides of the pots, keeping the uh, irrigation emitter in the middle. We're starting with the Emerald Giant bell peppers. Just tip that upside down, pat the bottom of them, 
give it a little squeeze and pull them out. They're looking fantastic. Those roots are nice and bright white. We're just gonna plant those down in this hole. Peppers are a lot like tomatoes in that uh, they will grow roots out of their stem if you put that underground. So we have one in there, super easy peasy. Now we'll do the second one. Now, Emerald Giant bell peppers have been my favorite because they are very productive and they're nice and blocky and big and they have a really thick like wall in their, you know, of, of their pepper. They're just really nice and juicy and I was so glad to find their um, seeds again this year. And my gardener has the seeds for Emerald Giant. Okay, so here's the second pepper going in. Guys, it really can't get any easier than that. Backfill, put some pressure on that, and those are planted. So Kevin and I are gonna get busy planting the rest of the peppers, and then we need to move on to the rest of the seeds that will be planted in the greenhouse. All right, after the peppers, the next thing we're gonna do is another six buckets of green beans. I guess I'm the bean guy today. We're gonna do our contender green beans next. We did the jade green beans over there. We're gonna do six buckets of the contender beans here. We're gonna do the same thing, five plants per bucket. So about 30 plants. Now this year we're also doing some pole beans out in the main garden. So uh, we'll be doing lots and lots of green beans this year. I can't wait to show you what we're gonna be doing out there. But the contender beans, these are ones that we saved from our beans last year. Uh, just like before, we're gonna do five per plant. We'll put them about a half inch under the soil. We're gonna put five around the edge like this. You guys, this will provide us with lots of green beans for fresh eating. Okay, moving on. Next, we're gonna be doing six buckets of some pickling cucumbers. We're trying a variety that we've never tried before. It is called the Wisconsin SMR 58. Now, when we were at the feed store and we were looking at seeds, because every time there are seeds, I have to look at the seeds, <laughs> we saw a Wisconsin variety and we just had to try them because Kevin and I are from Wisconsin. That's where we grew up. So I bet they're the best pickling uh, cucumbers ever. So we are gonna be planting just like two seeds. Well, maybe two seeds in each hole for six buckets. And then if you remember last year, we kind of have a kind of like a fabric or some kind of a trellis that we run up here and attach to the top of the greenhouse here and the the cucumber vines will climb up there and then the cucumbers produce and it's a wonderful thing so uh, that's what we're going to be doing in here we are going to be growing two different varieties of cucumbers out in the raised beds in the raised bed garden area too so we'll have three different types of uh three different varieties of cucumbers. So that'll be fantastic. Cucumbers are very easy to grow. They're definitely one of the things that you should grow from seed. It's actually the most cost-effective way to grow cucumbers is from seed. They're kind of a medium-sized seed and they only need to be like a half inch underneath the ground. So I'm just gonna make a little hole here with my finger, little hole over here, and I'm just gonna put two seeds in each hole and cover them up. Dropped one. And that's what we're gonna do for the rest of the five buckets. We'll just water them thoroughly and probably within a week we'll have them sprouting. This is so exciting. All right, next up we're gonna be planting zucchini and yellow crookneck squash. We're going to be planting the Black Beauty Zucchini, which is kind of a tried and true variety. And the yellow crookneck that we're going to be planting is called Early Yellow Crookneck. Apparently it's very popular in the southern states, so we know it will do well in the heat here. And it also says that it freezes well, which is really fantastic. Now, for years and years, we battled squash bugs here on the homestead. We've tried everything you can imagine to combat the squash bugs. At the end of the day, you guys, here's what we found out. Squash bugs are gonna happen. <laughs> Unless you're willing to poison them with something like seven dust or some other 
chemical poison, uh, you're probably not going to really get rid of them. So our solution is this. We plant our zucchini pretty early here in the greenhouse and we get a pretty good crop of them. Once they start to get really covered in squash bugs, we pull them and we wait. Mm -hmm. The squash bugs here last about six weeks, maybe eight weeks. Right. And then we can plant a second round of zucchini. And guess what? They don't get squash bugs because their life cycle is over later in the summer. That's what we do because we don't want to poison our food. And that's a good way to get a good crop of zucchini early in the spring and another crop later in the summer. And we can do that here in southern Missouri because we have such a long growing season. Right. You may not be able to do that in the north like Wisconsin or Canada or something like that, but maybe up there you don't have a problem with squash bugs. They're terrible here. Right. But that seems to be a really great solution for us. Right. So we're going to be planting just one plant in each bucket. We're going to do six buckets of zucchini and four buckets of the yellow crookneck squash. Both of the types of seeds get planted about an inch underground. Uh, because the plants are so big, we're gonna limit it to one plant, uh, but we're going to plant two seeds each, and when they both come up, or if they both come up, we'll just eliminate one of them. Well, you guys, that is everything we are going to be planting in the greenhouse. You may notice that we have two buckets here at the end that we didn't plant anything in. Honestly, this is everything we had planned. We have these two buckets, but you know what? We are taking a trip in just a couple days to a local nursery, an Amish-run nursery that's near us, and I can guarantee we are going to find something to put in these last two buckets. The last thing we need to do today is just water everything in really well so that the seeds can start to germinate. If the temperatures that we've had recently continue, uh, all of these seeds are going to be up in probably a week or less. You guys, this is exciting. It feels like summer is officially starting, uh, at least here in the greenhouse, summer is underway. Well, we are losing daylight, you guys, but we got the entire greenhouse planted. We started about 4.30. It's about 7.30 now. So three hours to get the entire greenhouse planted. I don't think that's bad at all. We are so happy that you joined us today for planting the entire greenhouse. And we look forward to you returning as these plants grow and produce tons of food for our family. You guys, if you're enjoying videos like this, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. And remember, the best way you can help us here on the homestead is just to share our videos on your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by your homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.